Hey guys, this is Substitute Topher filling in for the Topher today in beautiful San Francisco, California, driving the brand new Ford Mustang Mach-E GT Performance. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out the video on the base Mustang Mach-E GT. This is sort of like the version where it's just a little bit extra, a little bit extra of, uh, of everything. So let me walk you around this thing, uh, tell you what it's all about. And then we're going to go for a drive. We've got some nice mountain roads um, to test out this Mach-E GT. So, obviously, uh, this Mach-E GT looks quite a bit different than just the base Mach-E. We've got 20-inch wheels on this. Uh, the base Mach-E GT also has 20-inch wheels, but the performance has these sort of multi-spoke, almost like... BBS-esque style wheels on it. Um, and then we also have Brembo brakes tucked in there. That is also specific to this performance edition. We've got a light up pony on the front. Um, of course, it's not lit up now because it is bright outside, but at night that pony does light up. The entire front fascia is restyled as well to let you know that it's a GT. That's consistent with just the base car as well. This car is finished in rapid red, which is a color that you can also just get on the normal Mustang Mach-E base. I think it looks great. It's a very deep, scrumptious red color. Clear taillights, of course, that is carried through. I want to show you my favorite part about the GT Performance, and that is these seats. Look how cool those seats are. There's like this sort of half moon shaped thing at the top of the seat. Um, and then the whole seat where you actually sit, the part where your back and your buttocks go, is Alcantara. So that does a good job of holding you in place. We've got our, our buttons, of course, carried over from the normal Mach-E. This whole piece is like hard plastic. In fact, the whole seat back is hard plastic. Like a Porsche GT car. No, not actually, but kind of. Uh, the door panels have Alcantara on them as well, which is cool. I love the little subtle touches of Alcantara that they've added in here. Uh, it's not too big of a color difference to where you notice, but you know, if you're an enthusiast, you notice it's even on the dash up here. Um, and then we've got white stitching everywhere as well, which I think looks awesome. This particular Mach EGT is about 70 grand. Of course, this is the performance pack. Um, so, you know, that's like a... How much is that? I don't know. It's got $8,600 in options on it. Um, the normal Mustang Mach-E GT base starts at around 59 and then uh, the GT Performance is about 65 So uh, we're going to see if that extra $6,000 is really worth it. I just got out of the driver's seat of the base GT, and I'm looking forward to giving the Performance a drive and see what it's really like. And I'm child locked in. That's not good. There we go. Let's see if I've solved it. Aha! No longer a child. The main difference, I think, and the main thing that we're going to be able to tell the difference uh, up here in these mountain roads is we do have 20 inch Pirelli summer performance tires. Now, the base Mustang Mach E GT rides on um, Continental all seasons. So I think it's going to feel quite a bit different up here on these twisties. Um, I will, of course, report to you if it does power wise we're the exact same 480 horsepower gt and gt performance where this shines is it has 34 extra foot pounds of torque so this has got 634 foot pounds base car has only 600 when i say only i don't actually mean only but this has got just a little bit more also i apologize for the bandage on my hand try to ignore that though now i'm probably drawing your attention to it it's coming off. I don't have a replacement up here um, in the middle of the mountains, so I apologize if it comes off. Um, I was helping Charlie from Daily Motor do some work on his motorcycle, and I burned my hand on his exhaust, so that's what that is, if, <laughs> if anybody's wondering. All right, well, let's go ahead and take this thing out for a drive. Everything in here is very consistent with uh, just the normal Mach-E, you know, and when I say everything, I mean the infotainment, 
the little dial shifter, our parking brake, window switches, all this sort of, you know, normal stuff, apart from the seats and the upholstery and materials and stuff. It's all the same as the normal mach -E. In fact, the steering wheel seems to be the exact same. It would have been nice maybe to see a little bit of Alcantara on this steering wheel, and I think maybe that might be an option to get this little insert um, in Alcantara. But a full Alcantara steering wheel would be sweet in this thing. We're at about an 83% charge, so we should have, you know, pretty close to our full power, our full 480 horsepower and 634 foot-pounds of torque. All right, well, off we go. So as I just mentioned, 480 horsepower, 634 foot-pounds of torque, and um, that torque is apparent um, and very brutal when you do that. Whoa! <laughs> And what all that means is zero to 60 in just three and a half seconds. This thing absolutely scoots. Wow, that is um, up here in these mountain roads. You really gotta be careful because you put your foot down, you're gaining 30, 40, 50 miles an hour instantly. And um, there are quite a lot of unforgiving curves up here that uh, you really gotta watch out for. But this thing is just, I mean, properly quick. When I was uh, getting ready for this drive, I was really just expecting the GT to kind of feel like the long range Tesla Model Y. And um, from a drag race point, this thing would absolutely blow that out of the water. I mean, this is up to Tesla performance uh, territory. And rightfully so, because this wears the GT badge. Ford is very adamant about not releasing anything that doesn't deserve the GT badge, and I think that this does. You know, this is an electric car that has quite a bit of character and style, and it's something a little bit more special. You know, you don't see a million of these on the road like you do Teslas, um, and like you do Nissan Leaves and Pre-i. I think that uh, that's what really sets this aside, is it gives the enthusiast an option if they want an electric daily driver that's also fun to drive, it has a little bit of style, or actually quite a bit of style. The Mustang Mach-E GT is here for you. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, do a little bit of a launch here. So the Ford engineers told me you don't have to brake boost it, you just kind of uh, do this. Ooh. Oh. 60. <laughs> Somebody timed that. I th Allegedly it's three and a half, and um, I believe them. The front end of this thing lifts up, and you know, I didn't get that with the normal GT. I think it's the stickier rubber. It's able to lay its power down a little bit better. You get a little bit of wheel spin from the front wheels, which is odd, especially in a Mustang, but um, that's just the way of this car. And um, it feels, the way that it drives and the way that it feels, the way that it handles, it feels very European. And um, I'm saying that as a compliment. This is, overall, for one, it's the nicest interior I've ever seen in any Ford, and especially this, this GT trim with these really nice uh, bucket seats in here with the plastic backs and the Alcantara. I mean, this is a properly nice interior by any standard. I mean, any I, if this interior was in anything, I would be happy. It's a very nice place to be. And also the way that it just digs into corners. I mean, these Pirellis, it's a night and day difference from those all-season Continentals. Not to say those are bad, because those actually felt very good as well for an all-season, but these Pirellis really feel great. This car, oh. It grips, it really grips. I am stressed out on this road, but this car is very, very actually confidence-inspiring. The badge on the steering wheel is not, but the car itself is. I'm very torn on if I were to purchase Maki, -E, which to be honest with you, I think maybe I would. This car is that good. Um, if I were to purchase one, would I get the base GT or would I get the performance? Even though, you know, the, the wheel and tire setup on this is very nice, the extra torque, you know, you can feel it, it's nice. Uh, you shed 0.3 from your 3.80 to 60 to 3.5 on this. I think that I would honestly just go with the base GT because it's 90% the same car and you can save yourself what, about 
seven grand if you just don't get the performance. I can see the appeal from the performance though. If you're really a performance oriented driver, then this is definitely the way to go. The extra rubber, the extra torque, it certainly helps. But I think personally, GT, Grand Touring, you go for a long drive, you're able to do that spiritedly. And I think that the base GT car delivers all that you would ever need. Um, this performance is nice. I'm glad it exists because there are certainly people that will want to have the performance. But for me, the base GT is probably the way that I would go. And speaking of going on long drives, Ford has thought of this. And uh, it's appropriate that we're driving behind a Tesla right now because I think that's who they're aiming for with their new plan for their charging community, their charging system, their nationwide sort of interlocking community of charging stations, kind of just like how Tesla does with their superchargers. And it's kind of a clever way that they're doing it. So if you own a Ford or if you know about Fords, you'd probably be familiar with the app Ford Pass. If you have a Ford that's like 2017 or newer, uh, the Ford Pass app, is just an app that you download on your phone, and it allows you to do you know simple things like start your car, change your climate control, things like that. But with the Mach-E, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show you where all of your charging locations are. And say you wanna go on a grand tour, you wanna go on a road trip, Ford Pass will plan out a route for you to make sure you never run out of juice. It'll pinpoint every charge location that you need to stop at on the way to your destination. So I think that's pretty cool. It's very cool that they've integrated it into an already existing app, uh, one that Ford owners are already familiar with. So that'll make it easy for repeat Ford buyers and uh, for, for first time Ford buyers, it's easy as well. It's just an app that you download. So uh, pretty cool stuff. As far as this infotainment goes, it's all right. You know, I'm not a huge fan of having everything integrated into a screen. Um, we do at least have a volume knob, which is hilarious because it's just kind of stuck here on the screen, um, which I do appreciate. I love a good volume knob. I don't care too much for having climate control integrated into the infotainment. I think it's kind of an oversight and it's just more of a hassle than it is a convenience, especially when you're having to like blindly tap down here for what you want the car to do. It's just a little bit of a hassle, but every Mach-E is like this. It's not unique to the GT. Um, so if you're familiar with the Mach-E, you'll be familiar with the infotainment. Up in the uh, upper left-hand corner, that's where we access all of our drive modes. We have unbridled, engage, and whisper. It's sort of like a tier system. Whisper is like green eco mode. Engage is like normal. And unbridled is essentially sport. We also have propulsion sound in this which is kind of a more like normal organic electric car noise here. I will demonstrate. That was one of my biggest complaints in the normal Mach-E is I feel like the noise was like very artificial. And obviously it's, you know, it's all artificial, but this sounds more normal like an electric car. Do I prefer to drive with it on? No, I don't. Um, but you know, it's there if you want it. If you like to have a noise to your driving experience, propulsion sound is available for you. We've also got a feature down here called Unbridled Extend, and it's not available right now because I'm driving. You have to stop and get your settings right and you know set it. But essentially what that does is it's meant for track driving. So you're able to have your full capacity um, of you know just the car. Right, let's go ahead and read the disclaimer. Unbridled Extend is for track use only and not intended for public roads. It provides a performance driving experience refined for closed roadway or race course driving. Traction, stability control intervention, and regenerative braking energy recovery are reduced in tune for race course driving. Chassis dynamics, power capability, and accelerator response are tuned for control and confidence on the track. Unbridled Extend may not be available due to vehicle conditions. And whatever the vehicle conditions are in right now, it doesn't want to give me that. But hopefully that makes sense. That was like a novel that they've given us but anyways let's go ahead and take this back out on the road and maybe conclude our drive here shortly and give some final thoughts on this car this is so proper okay let's go back to our nav so i don't oh dear nope give me this yep So then, what does this car mean? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's nice to have an EV on the market that's a little bit unique, that has style, that 
pisses off Mustang fans all around the world. When Ford launched this car in its base form and they called it the Mustang, everybody was so upset and I didn't really understand why because you can still have a normal Mustang. It's not like this replaced the Mustang in, in any way, shape or form. It's just an additional car with the badge, but you know, whatever, it, it offended lots of people. I was never one of those people that was offended. I, I think it's a cool idea to bring the Mustang styling into an EV. It's fun. It's something that we can have in the market that somebody who still wants an EV but wants style, performance, that iconic name, they can still have it. And um, that's really cool that, that you're able to do that and that this car exists. I'm not interested in what the haters say about this car. I do quite like it. As far as base versus performance, I mentioned that earlier. I would probably just go with the base, though this performance trim is very cool. I'm not sure though if I like the design of these wheels over just the base wheels. I'll insert a side-by-side -side and let me know what you think. I kind of like the um, more simplified look of the base wheels, but that could just be me. This is one of the few vehicles I've emerged from actually wanting and the base Mach-E was close. It was like 70% of what it needed to be. And I think that this GT is the full 100%. This is what this car is intended to be. The Mach-E GT, it, it completes it for me. The base Mach-E is still a relatively good car, but the GT, this is it, man. If, if you're going for a Mach-E, go for the full GT. Not to mention the fact 59,000 for the base car, you get your $7,500 tax credit. That's 50 grand. I mean, 50 grand for an electric car with 270 miles of range, all wheel drive to begin with is great value for money. Not to mention all of your cool Mustangy things about this. So uh, I, would, I would do it, you know? I think one day maybe I will. I think I'd do Grabber Blue, base, which is the car that I just got out of was probably like my ideal spec. I do love the seats in this though. I wish that you could have these seats uh, in the base car, but I can get over some seats. He's going to find some paths. One more big one. <laughs> oh, it's just so much fun. It's so much fun. Gotta find a spot to wrap this up. That would not be fun to travel off of that there. All right, everyone, why don't we wrap this up in a cloud? What do you think? This is the first time I've ever concluded a review while being in a cloud, but uh, you know, there's a there's a first time for everything. So here we go. Still trying to hide my wound from you. I'm very sorry. All right. Well, that's going to conclude our drive here of this GT Performance. I hope you all enjoyed watching this. I didn't really think that this car would be as special as it is, but it is really something special. And I'm so happy that, that this car exists and that despite all the controversy they went through with the Mustang theme, it's just a cool car. I mean, you gotta appreciate this thing. Whoa. And appreciate that, holy crap. All right, back to the car. Anyways, um, thank you guys all so much for watching. This has been just an awesome drive today from the base to this car. Um, I hope you've had a chance to watch both videos so you can see me uh, drive a blue mach -E and then a red mach -E. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. This has been Substitute Topher filling in for the Topher today. And we will see you in the next video.